We're here on Caffrey's Hill Farm in Northern Ireland's centenary year and we're just going to have a chat about the, the farm's history. Stephen, any idea when did uh, Caffrey acquire this farm? This farm was purchased back in 1963, Brian, by the, the then Ministry, as it was known. Mm. A total of a thousand hectares was purchased for the princely sum of £39,000. And I know that the farm goes up to 380 metres uh, because many a time I've been foundered up there and anybody you talk to will, will kindly uh, tell you about the driving sleet and the, the wind and the rain. I wonder, do you think the farm's changed much over the years, Stephen? Parts of it has. When you look back through historical maps, you see it the actual bit around the buildings, the, the green ground or then by ground, hasn't changed a lot. Uh, and also probably around the, the, you know, the, the, the hill part hasn't. But the moorland, yes, back in the 1950s uh, through to the 80s, there was quite a bit of drainage and some forestation. And that probably was seen as increasing production you know, from, from the environment. But now, obviously, you're involved with, with returning some of that back to what it would have been like at the start of the 20th century. Yeah, and I suppose part of that is, is land designation as well. So the, the area is a severely disadvantaged area. And it's also Antrim Hills SPA. So that's a, an area for a special protected area for hen, harrier and merlin. So we're always uh, keeping an eye out what we should do uh, for foraging hen harriers in particular. But it is important to remember the farm is still the home to 100 suckler cows and 1,100 ewes. And there, there has to be a financial and a production from the environment. So I think the two can work together now, Brian. I think that, and they have really worked together, because since 2009, um, when they started the Glenwary Hills Regeneration Partnership, they've achieved great success. Um, Ireland's highest population density now of Irish hare and uh, red grouse and uh, the place has been managed very well for breeding waders and for hen and harrier coming into forage and all that's been achieved i don't think there's been any impact on on beef and sheep performance at all no like in fact this year brian we've produced more lambs from the hill farm than we've probably ever done like there's a uh, there's 1100 ewes up here and we've produced over just over 1600 lambs and you know again i think that shows that the two are marrying quite well in a way, we've turned time back with our, our suckler herd in particular, in that when the farm was first bought, there was a herd established of, of blue-grey cows, as mm -hmm. we would call them, back in 1965, and that was a, a, a Galloway shorthorn cross. And we went back in 2002 and looked at what we could do to replicate that, and we come up with the three-breed cross, predominantly based on science. And the three breeds are the Shorthorn, the Aberdeen Angus, and the Limousin. And we are now winning over 95 calves for the 100 cows up here at the Hill Farm. That's excellent. So we're now looking at flood alleviation, carbon sequestration, carbon storage, and water quality. And, and our peatlands are in the catchment for Kalilian Reservoir, which serves 60,000 people uh, from Larne to Ballymena. Uh, and we're trying to maximise our water quality and our carbon storage through how we manage our peatland. So particularly with the 60 hectare forest to bog project, and we're starting now to, to um, re-wet open moorland. But I think too, Brian, there's a lot of changes to policies and, and yes, our, our practices have evolved. But the one big constant at the hill farm here has been the flow of people, whether it be students, or farmers or upland land managers. Our doors has always been open and there is a lot of demonstration opportunities here at the Hill to show what we're doing. There's, there's something here to interest everyone.